Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at a sophisticated phishing scam uh, that I thought was kind of interesting because it's got some... So, it's got a chain. So, first of all, you go to scribehow.com, which to my knowledge is a legitimate uh, website. Uh, you'll receive an email from someone you know or have some sort of business with telling you that there's a new document you have to sign. I believe in this case, the person who sent this to me, it was for school. So you get a new document. It says proposal. And you click proposal. And now you've gone to a website. Now at this point, I was expecting this to be a click fix. But this is actually a genuine captcha aimed to stop automated threat hunting tools. Although it is a pretty easy captcha. Now if you're on a data center IP address, at this point it will redirect you to the real Google login. Uh, so that if you're just a malware analyst, you won't get caught, right? Now, what if uh, you're not? Well, now you've got a fake Google page. You can try and take a bit of a look around this uh, and see. So now what happens if we do the usual and just put something bogus in? Not actually a fake email, but it's not a real Google account. And it takes a second. So what I reckon they've done is on the back end, they've got some sort of scraper that's connected to Google servers, because we can actually see through our own connections. Actually try getting MITM proxy going just to see exactly how this scheme is working. So this is all normal. Now we click through to the so-called uh, proposal document. There we go. So now we're through, and after we... And at this point, uh, any runs uh, rules are detecting this is a phishing scam. And they're right. Now we get a CAPTCHA to prove that we're human. Of course, because we got MITM proxy going, this is loading a bit slower, but you can still see, okay, everything here, everything here looks legit to me. That's not going to fool a sophisticated system. It wouldn't fool some, even uh, just like an automated ML, uh, but it, it will fool like an automated. So now we're on a fake Gmail site. Uh, and this seems to be pulling some stuff from Pixum Photos. Uh which doesn't seem to be a photo sharing website. Now we're going to try our same... Oh, it doesn't matter that I spelled it wrong. It doesn't matter because it doesn't exist. Of course, I know it doesn't. Okay, and see, it, it's able to validate that. Now, what happens if we click any of the other buttons? We can go create account. That just does nothing. Uh, we can't actually change the language because this is just a copy and pasted HTML. But... This is real. Let's take a closer look at what's going on here. Clear, don't try this at home. Don't try playing with phishing sites unless you're really confident what you're doing. You have a well-secured uh, setup where you're not worried and you know you've got a good idea of what's going on. So we're going to go through this now uh, on the actual, like on the VM, not... Uh, and of course, this VM does have some stuff on it. It's also, it's protected by threat locker, so I'm not that worried uh, and I know what I'm doing. But uh, don't don't try this at home. And we're going to see, okay, what can we find out? What can we, uh, we want to turn on our browser tools. We may have to go back to do that because of the, but here we can see uh, the fake page. Of course, that link doesn't work unless we click a bunch of, see what this does. Okay, so it just takes us back to the phishing page. Okay, now we have an anti-debug on here so that, uh, so what it tries to do, and here is the sneaking. So we've got uh, obfuscated function name, performance.now, uh, then we've got uh, second obfuscated function name, and then we've got, uh, we'll trigger, trigger a debugger statement. Okay, well, that's going to be pretty easy to get around. So we'll set these two flags to true, which are both anti-debug flags. This is surprisingly readable JavaScript. So we've got the... These are going to be the debug hotkeys. That's why those don't work. Prevent, prevent. Uh, then we've got this one. And this is going to take us to the real page. So you might be fooled. We can actually beat this really easily just by turning off pause on debugger statement. Now look, uh, we can debug. And now we're on a phishing site. And we can go to the network page and we can see all the stuff that's happening here. So we got Flagpedia. This looks like this is all normal. So what happens if we put a thing that doesn't exist into this site? 
So it calls a WebSocket here. You can see, all right. So we send that. That's our ping. That's some sort of base64 to email. Then it takes that, takes the IP address, browser connected. And then what we've got going on is on their server, they've got some sort of scrape bot that is validating Google accounts. This is this gives them an advantage because it means that if hypothetically, if I had entered a real Google account into here, it would know it's a real Google account, so it asked the password which doesn't really matter. Uh, and then, because uh, on modern accounts, you've also got the two-factor authentication. So how do they get that? Well, what they'll do is they're going to uh, just forward that through onto their fish kit. So we do definitely have a somewhat more sophisticated fish kit, not the smallest uh, anti-debug I've ever seen before. And by keeping everything in a web socket, well, and it may not even be for obfuscation reasons, but it does provide a bit of obfuscation because a lot of uh, web attacking and reverse engineering tools are not going to be built around that. So how do you uh, avoid this? Well, first of all, always check. Uh, okay, what domain am I on? This is not google.com. Uh, this is not a malware payload. I got an email from someone saying they'd fallen for this. This is not a malware payload. You don't have to worry about malware. You just have to not give them your information in this context. Uh, what seems to be happening is a bit like a worm. They're getting into people and like real companies, Google accounts. People are entering their credentials into this scam site. So you, if you get an email from a completely legitimate email uh, that looks legit, you still have to check. Okay, uh, is this some weird-looking foreign domain? Like this is. Uh, randomlettersandnumbers.es uh, is not Google. Uh, you can't totally rely on this because, oh, and it's even, they even used Google's SSL certificates, but that doesn't tell us anything. So that's the main watch out here. So that's going to be all uh, for me for now. Actually, no, one more thing. So what do you do if you've fallen for this? Uh, well, you go to your Google account, change your password, kill all of the sessions. Uh, if you have two-factor authentication, keep it. But the main thing is you turn on, you you just have to remove any entered accounts. Uh, if they've changed your password, uh, Google does have a recovery. Let me, I'm going to show it. That works reasonably well. So you go here. I'll include this in the description. And you can usually get back in through that. I would also suggest if you see that they have sent phishing emails to anyone, immediately respond saying, Hi, I got hacked. Uh, this is a phishing email. Do not, do not complete with it. That's all for me for now. Bye.